Well, I got some more eBay junk in today. Um, it's not a lot though, it's just one thing. It is a Pioneer Laser Active Unit. Um, never done a video about this, I don't believe, but I do have several of these consoles. And the reason I still have them is because I knew they would go up in value, which they have, and I haven't nailed down the mods for them yet. There's um, was an AC3 digital um, audio output mod. I think there's an RGB mod, but it only works for the packs and not the actual um, laser discs because laser discs are encoded in composite. Um, got this one for super cheap. I was the only bidder, and the start bid was $45. Um, the, the guy said, powered up, but eject wouldn't work, stuff like that. And it was not in very good shape. So, you know, and shipping was like 60 bucks. And um, big shout out to the seller. I think his I, his AB, eBay ID was like 911s or something like that. I can't remember his real name out in Vegas. He recognized me just by my name and the state that I live in. And I was like, how do you know who I am? And he's like, well, I'd recognize the name and then put it together. I'm like, wow, that's pretty crazy. I don't get recognized like that too often. So he hooked me up with free shipping on top of that. So I really have almost nothing invested into this one. So I'm super pumped. So I already started to open it up, but what I found was kind of crazy. I've never seen packing material like that before. Like little cardboard triangles. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. I don't know if this is a a U-Haul thing. It actually has a somewhat of a brand on it. Expandos, expandos.com, but they, I mean, there is no give to them at all. It's a horrible packing material, but as long as the laser active is protected on all six sides, then it should be fine. Tell you what, looking at that, the one thing I can think of was that would be killer fire starter. You know, with all the holes in it, that stuff would go up really quick. Wow, you went to town on the corner. You got one of those on just all the corners. That's wow, that's impressive packing skills right there, buddy. just about to complain I guess it's just on two front corners uh, it seems like a lot lately I get packages like this in and there is just packing tape wrapped around every square inch of the bubble wrap you know just some scotch tape to keep the packing tape from falling off of the console or whatever before you get it into the box is plenty you know I don't I don't want to spend half my day just trying to separate packing tape from bubble wrap No pack, of course, that would have made it much, much more valuable. Let's see, there are a lot of scratches on top. Kind of seen that in the picture. 
Looks like the, the uh, front fascia's got a bit of a cracked piece of plastic on that corner. The rest seem okay. I just got one of these from Canada a couple weeks ago and I'm still kind of fighting with the seller because he, he didn't pack it for shit. There was actually one layer of bubble wrap across the front and then the actual box. That's it. That was all between the front fascia and being beat to shit and it was cracked badly like right here and here I think maybe up in here I don't remember but it was it was bad enough that I was like I think I'm just gonna return this thing and I'm st still haven't worked it out and let's see I think that's about all for what it looks like don't really care too much it was so cheap you know button problem. There we go. Well, I thought, I guess I do have some acknowledgement of power on the screen. But yeah, one of the things he said in the auction was there was no sound like the motors were trying to open the tray or anything. And that's exactly what's happening here. There's zero, zero life in it. So I'm immediately ready to open this thing up. Now what I'm seeing is there's two big screws on the sides. And yes, I unplugged it. Honestly, got a giant circuit board here. See the laser, big tray. It is awfully dusty on the inside. So I'm gonna set up a top view camera and start tearing in some more. Well, I'm looking at um, the power supply board is kind of hidden underneath on this side, and I can see right in here, and I can see a bunch of caps that look just fine and I can see two brand names two different color caps they're both Nishikon and the rest of them are there's either black or brown and they're all pretty much the same thing so I'm betting the caps are okay at least on the power supply you can also see a couple belts already one is way back in there and one of them is right here and I can kind of turn on it and I can kind of get some slippage on the on that motor spindle and it looks like I can kind of get in there and maybe turn try to see what that's doing I think it's going to push out the CD tray so the bit one back there might be for spindle up and down and then there's probably another one that I'm not seeing just yet for the laser disc tray to come out but like I said we didn't hear anything so I'm not sure it's just belts yet well I got the CD tray out far enough to play with it Maybe hard to see but um, the whole laser sled is actually dropping away when I mend and delay the tray 
kind of hard to believe it. all that runs on that one motor and that one little belt. So there might be another one that's supposed to be running in tandem with it because I can only get it out so far and it hangs up and I don't want to force it anymore. And it doesn't look like it would clear the spindle anyway. And I had to move the laser sled in by hand all the way to center before I could go very far with it because the very back of the tray was hitting it. This part, I'm just curious if anything would happen if I plugged it in. No, I got some flashing lights. Uh, I mean, I've got the power light and I've got flashing lights for the open and closed tray, but no actual movement. Well, a couple things I can definitely get out of the way are the main board and the clamper. I didn't even know it was called the clamper, but that's what the uh, service manual calls it. All of a sudden I've got the CD tray all the way out and I don't even know how I did it I didn't actually play with anything <laughs> the the belt back here does run the laser assembly back and forth uh, I think I'm still okay to plug it in just to see if it's gonna possibly Thought, my, thought it might try to pull itself back in, but it doesn't seem like it wants to do anything still. Nope, still no life. Now when I push it back in though, the spindle is raising right away and that shouldn't be either because you want your disc from here to not hit any of that stuff so it could be it's just uh, no longer in a, uh, the gears aren't aligned anymore I don't know but of course the service manual says to get in here and to, to disassemble it you eject the main tray, they're the big tray. Well, that's the one thing I can't do. But it did say something about these two back screws right here, possibly needing to come off to, to get the tray out. It just still does not help it at all. I don't. I don't really know that that uh, I don't know that those two screws hold it to anything kind of just felt more like they were I don't know stoppers on the top side maybe that's all they really were Ugh, I don't know I just I need to find whatever initiates that tray movement well one of the main tricks I've seen is the laser sled back and forth there's a big piece of plastic that comes forward here and it actually hits that giant gear right there. So if you move it back, that's when you can get full CD tray movement in and out. But it still doesn't make sense. It's not even lined up all the way yet. 
There. That looks closer to all the way in. I mean, that may not be. But it, does, it still doesn't make sense that the spindle is coming up during this. That should be like a secondary movement somehow. Okay, so a little more research and uh, Blue BMW, who is a pretty well-known, respected modder in the, in the community, posted like five years ago uh, some info about the Laser Active. And since I don't seem to have not really a gear problem, but more of a power problem, um, I went back and rechecked and he did. He does say that there could be a um, five volt rail problem on the power supply, even though I do seem to have power. When the buttons are non-responsive, he seems to think that there's um, a, what do you call them, um, an IC protector or something like that. And matter of fact, I think they're called ICP-25 and, um, well, ICP-N25 and ICP-N50, and I can see them written on the power supply board there. I haven't actually seen the actual component yet. But he is saying, I am unplugged, that if you can't get the tray out, then you have to finagle it out the back. So I'm going to try to take this back panel off and see if I can get the power supply board out the back somehow. Okay, so there was, looks like five screws along the outside, and then there was one right here, which was a different thread that was holding this vertical board to the backboard. And then you can kind of pull it out a little bit. Let me switch to the top camera here. Okay, so you don't need to take out all of the screws right in this area they're basically connected to these two boards and you can kind of finagle it out a little bit here like so, and then I should have access to the power supply. All right, so I've got a couple of two prong connectors, one way hidden back in here, one here, and then of course the AC mains input, and then there's, looks like three ribbon cables right there, but they're long, and they go over that board down there and I think that only, hopefully there's only three mount screws and that should be somewhat easy enough same size as the uh, back panel screws as well. Good 
Good. Okay. So. Looks like I might have to undo the mains or maybe the grommet. Yeah, the grommet looks even harder to get off there. some very large caps on here so you want to try not to lay it on metal and arc them you might switch back to the top one now all right so i'm trying to figure out what these protectors are now here's the text i was talking about that kind of tells you which ones are what and icp n15 for IC 101 and IC 102. No, maybe that's ICP N25. And then 201 is an N50. And 301, 202, 204. It's kind of hard to read this. It's like the commas are out of place or something. So. Apparently ICP N25 is the type of the component and then IC 101, 102 is the actual name on the circuit board, the identifier. I also seem to have like a little bit of a wet spot right there where the dust just seems to be darker than the rest of the dust. So I'm going to check and make sure that these caps right in here haven't leaked out also. And Blue BMW just says to check for continuity on these and that should tell you whether or not they're good. And then he also has a diagram of what pins right here are plus 5 volt, minus 5 volt, plus 14 volt, minus 14 volt as well. Alright, so I'm just going to have to try to point these out to you. Uh, obviously, I see 204 is this bodged one in here. And then I see 101, I see 102, 201, and 202. And then I think that also said something about uh, a 301. And it's down here. Oh, look at that. IC 101 is dead. So I may have found the problem with this laser active. Well, obviously the first step is to get the bad component out. Luckily the Heiko 808 makes quick work of that. Well, there it is and you can kind of see it says N15. So try to look for something like that. Well, I just had a look and Mauser and DigiKey do not carry these. And they don't carry any of the other sizes either. eBay has them, of course, but they're all in China, usually mostly in China. And it's February, so even if I ordered them today, it'd be weeks before I got them. So I'm not real sure what to do. I did I did find the data sheet the N15 is a 0.6 amp, and the N25 is a 1 amp, and the N50 is a 2 amp. So if your other fuses are blown, yeah, and it is described as just a fuse. If they're blown, that's what they are. So you could technically, I guess, replace 
with just a regular little fuse if you wanted to but I don't have a 0.6 amp one so I'm kind of stuck on this okay so another thing that um, blue BMW provided was what voltages these pins were supposed to be and he said to make sure that you don't have a short to ground on your rail and I know that these first two pins are ground and the one that I actually had a blown fuse on is 14 volts plus 14 volts so I want to check see this will be the ribbon cable going out to the motherboard and stuff I want to check to see if I've got continuity to ground and I do not that's good I should not also not have it up here nope okay so um, his thought was usually when these blow it was a, it was a bad pack because the surface mount caps in the packs are a lot like turbo duos and whatnot where they they fail badly and all the time so it's possible this was just blown because of a, uh, a bad capacitor or leaky capacitor in, in some laser active pack so I think I'm going to try to get some kind of fuse coming but I'm gonna put this product aside for a few days and wait for those fuses and then we're gonna give it a go again